Well, President Trump did not come to an agreement with North Korea's Kim Jong-un in Vietnam during their second summit. Mr. Trump said that Kim asked the U.S. to lift all economic sanctions on his country, but only refer offered to dismantle one nuclear site. North Korea disputes this claim, saying that it only asked for partial sanctions relief. However, at a press conference, the president emphasized that his relationship with Kim is still positive. Margaret Brennan has more on the president's reaction to the summit. Sometimes you have to walk. It was a high-stakes meeting with a disappointing outcome. After extensive face-to-face -face talks in a five-star Hanoi hotel, President Trump said Kim Jong-un's offer was simply not good enough to give up America's leverage. CBS's Major Garrett asked the president about lifting sanctions. Basically, uh, they wanted the sanctions lifted in their entirety, and we couldn't do that. They were willing to denuke a large portion of the areas that we wanted, but we couldn't give up all of the sanctions for that. Will all the sanctions that are currently in existence remain, sir? They're in place. Uh, you know, I was watching, as a lot of you folks over the weeks have said, oh, uh, we've given up. We haven't given up anything. Kim Jong-un offered, the president said, to totally dismantle the Yongbyon complex, North Korea's central facility for nuclear research and development, in exchange for sanctions relief. But Secretary of State Mike Pompeo explained that the U.S. wanted more. Even the Yongbyon facility and all of its scope, which is important for sure, still leaves missiles, still leaves warheads and weapon systems. So there's a, there's, there's a lot of other elements that we just couldn't get to. And for the first time, the president spoke in detail about other sites discovered by U.S. intelligence, including a second uranium enrichment site that U.S. experts want to inspect. I think they were surprised that we knew. It was an abrupt downturn after both leaders had struck an optimistic tone hours earlier. Kim Jong-un, in his first ever exchange with a Western reporter, said he had a gut feeling that there's going to be good results. Well, it's too early to tell. But that goodwill fell short. Still, the president said while he was done talking for now, he remained friendly with the North Korean dictator. There's a warmth that we have. Now, I hope that stays. I think it will even saying he took Kim at his word when he denied knowing about the harsh treatment of American student Otto Warmbier, who died shortly after being released from a North Korean prison. I don't believe that he would have allowed that to happen. It just wasn't to his advantage to allow that to happen. Those prisons are rough. They're rough places, and bad things happened. But I really don't believe that he was... Uh, he, he, I don't believe he knew about it. Jung Park is a former CIA analyst and a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. She joins me now from Washington. Jung, we'll get into the, these talks in just a moment, but I actually wanted to start with the president's comments on Otto Warmbier. Here's how Ohio Republican Senator Rob Portman had to react, reacted to those comments. Well, I mean, I think it's clear that the public security forces um, knew exactly what uh, happened with Otto, and yet for 16 months they refused to tell us. That alone is, um, you know, shows the nature of this regime. And um, so I, I, have, I have no questions about who we're dealing with here. Jung, hearing Portman's comments there, is there another way the president could have really approached this issue? Uh, you know, the president's comments about Otto Warmbier were surprising, especially because human rights and Otto Warmbier and his family were such a key part of the president's concerns just a year ago. Um, and I think that um, deflecting attention away from the human rights issue um, is, a, is a mistake. Um, the U.N., in a Commission of Inquiry report uh, in 2014, has, has shown that Kim Jong-un— um, I mean, North Korea is a serial violator of human rights, um, and to uh, swap that away, I think, would be a, is a mistake. So, Jung, this summit ended with no tangible progress. What's your reaction to that? What advice would you be giving the White House at this point? You know, there was a uh, flurry of speculation about what would happen, and I think that it would be safe to say that no one really anticipated that uh, that both sides would walk away, and it looks like it did, that they both sides did. Um, and I think this points to the dangers of having just a leader-to-leader -leader summit and having con too much confidence in that, um, and also reflects the importance of process, of working-level discussions before we have a summit like this, um, before we uh, expend uh, uh, time and government resources on this type of meeting. Jung, who has more leverage now, North Koreans or the U.S.? I think the North Koreans um, 
pretty much told us that we have the leverage. Um, the North Korean uh, foreign minister gave a rare press conference just uh, a few minutes ago, saying that they had asked for sanctions removal, um, and that uh, the president walked away because it was what they were willing to give up in, in exchange was not enough. Um, and I agree with that. What the North Koreans were, were asking for, judging from the foreign minister's statements, is that they were asking for the sectoral sanctions to be lifted. Um, and so these are the things that are biting the North Korean economy, and these are the things that have the best uh, potential to change Kim's outlook on how to, how to use his nuclear weapons. So from sort of a, a larger context perspective here, what needs to happen next for this to move forward at this point? I think what needs to happen is what didn't happen um, before Hanoi and before Singapore, um, and that is that the president has to empower Steve Began, the special representative on North Korea policy, um, and to tell Kim and be very clear to Kim Jong Un that he needs to that Kim himself has to empower his negotiators so that at the working level we can make progress on uh, closing the gaps that were clearly uh, demonstrated at, in the Hanoi summit. Thank you, Jung, again for joining Thank us. You. you bet.